Hi, my name is James Stamba. I'm the priest at Church of the Holy Apostles here in Penwin, Pennsylvania, just outside of Philadelphia. I'm here in this time of national and local crisis and sickness and anxiety and fear to offer a couple of spiritual resources for dealing with that fear and that anxiety. These aren't very complicated. They certainly are not innovative. Um, they actually connect us to the very core of our Christian tradition because at the very core of that tradition is a faith, a trust in the promises of God that we have received through Jesus Christ. And so I want to offer a few resources to help build up that faith, to help shape your hearts and your minds in that trust in God's promises. And really the beginning place for all of that is in God's holy scriptures. As I want to share with you a few excerpts of scriptures that really mean a lot to me and really bring me a lot of comfort and peace in times of anxiety and fear. And I'm going to start with a few of my favorite psalms. This is an excerpt of Psalm 23. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. From Psalm 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom then shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom then shall I be afraid? From Psalm 40. I waited patiently upon the Lord. He stooped to me and heard my cry. Be pleased, O Lord, to deliver me. O Lord, make haste to help me. From Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength a very present help in time of trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth be moved, and though the mountains be toppled into the depths of the sea, though its water rage and foam, and though the mountains tremble at its tumult. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. From Psalm 86, In the time of my trouble I will call upon you, for you will answer me. From Psalm 91, He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High abides under the shadow of the Almighty. He shall deliver you from the snare of the hunter and from the deadly pestilence. You shall not be afraid of any terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, of the plague that stalks in the darkness, nor of the sickness that lays waste at midday. Now I want to share with you a few passages from some of the other parts of Scripture. From Deuteronomy 31, verse 8. It is the Lord who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not fail you or forsake you. Do not fear or be dismayed. From Joshua chapter 1, verse 9. I hereby command you, be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened or dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. From Matthew 28, verse 20, Jesus said, Remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. From 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. From 1 John chapter 4, verse 18, There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear. From Isaiah chapter 53, verse 4, Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases, yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by God and afflicted. Which goes with 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24, that says, Jesus himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, so that free from sins we might live for righteousness, and by his wounds you have been healed. Romans chapter 8, verse 28. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. And from Romans chapter 8, verses 31 through 39. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? Who will bring any charges against God's elect? It is God who justifies who is to condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died, yes, who was raised, 
who is at the right hand of God, who intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? No. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loves us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. I'd also like to share with you a couple of resources for prayer that my congregation and I find very meaningful. And the first is a very simple prayer called the Jesus Prayer. It comes out of Eastern Christianity where it is practiced very frequently, but it's really right out of Scripture, and it's it's a very simple prayer. It's designed to be said over and over again. And what I find is that when I'm too anxious or too unfocused to look at an extended passage of Scripture and to really be able to focus on the words, I find that I can still say this very simple prayer, the Jesus prayer. It goes like this. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Or even shorter, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me. And like I said, it's meant to be said over and over again. Sometimes I use this prayer rope, which is just knots, special knots on a rope. And each time I say the prayer, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. My fingers move along to each knot on the rope. And I keep track of of how many times I say it. But more than that, it keeps my hands busy so that my mind can focus on Jesus. Make no mistake, there is power in Jesus' name. And I believe that when we call out on the name of Jesus, he is present with us and is an ever-present help in time of trouble and need. Another prayer practice is part of what the church calls the daily office, this daily round of prayers that Christians have been praying for the last thousand years or so, probably more than that. And in the Anglican tradition, we have one of those portions of of, of that cycle of prayers called morning prayer. It's a beautiful service, and you can find resources for it on our website, holyapostlespa.org slash crisis. You'll find a service leaflet that we use and some other resources. You'll also find all of the scriptures and all of the suggestions that I've made so far. Forward Movement also produces an excellent podcast for morning prayer. It's called A Day at the Office, and you can find that at the iTunes store. And the Mission of St. Clair has a great website and app version of morning and evening prayer. You can find that at missionsaintclair.com, and that's Claire, C-L-A-R-E, missionsaintclair.com. Another part of that daily cycle of prayer called the daily office is Compline, or sometimes called night prayer. And Compline is a very short office. It takes maybe about five minutes to say, but it is so peaceful and so calming and so reassuring. It is the perfect way to end a day. I find that if I put down my phone and I turn off the news and I gather my family and say Compline, that it's just a way to release my anxiety, release my fear, a way to be able to go to sleep peacefully, trusting in the promises of God. And so if you'd like to say this ancient, these ancient, ancient prayers for comfort and peace at night, You can find it in the Book of Common Prayer on page 127, or you can find resources for Compline on our church's website. Again, it's holyapostlespa.org slash crisis. Finally, I'd like to end this video in prayer, and I want to pray a collect that is adapted from the 1928 Book of Common Prayer. It's a collect in time of great sickness and mortality. Let us pray. O most mighty and merciful God, in this time of grievous sickness, we flee unto you for our help and strength. We beseech you to deliver us from our peril. Give strength and skill to all those who minister to the sick. 
Prosper the medical means by which healing and cure are sought, and grant that perceiving how frail and uncertain our life is, we may apply our hearts unto that heavenly wisdom which leads to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Sisters and brothers, thank you for joining me in this short video. May God's peace be with you, and may God's blessing stay with you and your family and those that you love in this time.